Alrighty guys, I'm Casey and welcome to a brand new episode of Stone Block 2 guys. Welcome on back. If you missed the last episode, I'll catch you up very briefly. We did this room right here. This has got all of our auto armors in it and all of our auto sieves in it. Now we did this in a previous episode, uh, setting these up, but then I moved it into this room and gave it a more polished, more professional look. And I really do like it. I love this roof, how this dark roof contrasts with the light that we've got going on down here. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I still defend the choice of dark oak. I know a lot of people wouldn't, um, wouldn't, but I do rather like the dark oak. I think it looks really, really good up there. Now, there's a couple of changes I've made since the last episode that I want to go over briefly. Uh, this pillar was actually here. And the same on this side. This pillar was one block over. It was here. Uh, but I had to move it back, uh, shortening this from being two blocks wide to being one block wide. Because I had made a mistake in the last episode. It was only a minor mistake, but it just meant that I didn't have enough storage drawers. And the mistake was very simply this compressor right here. This is breaking down, or rather this is compressing sand into compressed sand. I had forgotten to click extract on the item node behind it. I don't actually have my Yeta wrench on it to show you, but the item node is behind it. I forgot to put an extract on it. So it wasn't actually pulling out of there and putting it into the sieve, meaning we weren't sieving sand. So all of the sand goodies, just we weren't getting them. And once I rectified that mistake, we started to get the sand goodies. Then I started to realize that actually we didn't have enough space. We were actually one too short, one block too short um, to have them all. Uh, that's providing that I've got every drop at the moment, which I think I do, but we might have missed a couple of these bushes and stuff. We're actually getting a fair amount of those bushes. Now, look at it. And another thing I did do is I did upgrade all of these by one, uh, just to increase it uh, by 32 times. For now, so we weren't losing them, apart from these guys. Uh, these guys got one of those, but then they got a void upgrade. There's just a, a significant amount of these pebbles, and I don't really see a use for them just yet. So I'm just going to avoid the excess. Uh, we're not going to avoid the excess all in all, because we can make those into diorite, andesite, and granite. Which is something we definitely want to do. That would be a real nice thing to have. But that's going to be a later farm, and uh, for right now, I'm more than happy just to have those build up there, and then just avoid the extra. We get so many of them, we're going to be, we're going to be using them like nobody's business, or we're going to be producing them like nobody's business. So that brings me in to today's episode. I've hollowed out this huge area right here, and I still don't think it's tall enough. I want to go even taller, but uh, I'm going to see how this sort of goes off right now. Now, this is the door that leads to my wife's base, and eventually we'll tear down this wall right here. We'll have like a really cool front facade to our base. Uh, but for right now, this is the entrance to our base. And what I want to do is I want to have a couple of avenues. I want to have one going this way and one going this way. And then here, we're going to have a shop. And over here, we'll have a shop that sells things that my wife can come in and buy. And then I want to have this like grand hallway that goes sort of all the way back here and into our base. And I want it to be really tall. I want it to be look really elegant. I want to use a different, a few different resources in it. And that's kind of the big project for today. This is going to take up a lot of my time because I got to get it absolutely perfect. And I'm not entirely certain what I want to do. But I think we should start with one of the resources that I want to use. And that being nether brick. Or rather, nether brick. <laughs> nether brick. Now, I don't have much nether brick. We, this is sort of producing as fast as it can. Uh, it looks like it takes a little bit of time to actually put the item in there. But that's okay. We can rig a fast one of those up if we need to. Uh, but for right now, I want to use nether brick, which means I need to smelt down a bunch of this. And I'm hoping that if I, if I put this in here and we take this out, so that should start doing that. Now, that's one way that we can do it. But we've also got this biomarker. Which I have no idea how to use. Do I just right-click it? No. Do I shift and right-click it? Nope. Uh, I've no idea how to use this, so I need to have a look into it. According to Google, this doesn't actually transform us to the nether. It actually terraforms the area around us and makes it a nether biome. So, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get nether brick from there. So it looks like we're doing this the old-fashioned way of just waiting for the netherrack to perform. Mind you, the netherrack isn't the only block that I want to use. There are a lot of other blocks that I want to use. And I'm not entirely certain on the entire palette just yet. I need to put it all together. But I do know that I want to start with nether brick. So let me get a little bit of work done and then I can show you guys exactly what I mean. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> like, subscribe, and let's get into the episode. So I think the first place that I'm going to start is the doors right here. 
Now, when they're closed, I want to have some sort of like grand archway going into them. I think that would be really, really cool. I'm not sure exactly how I want it to look, but I think the three different types of blocks that I want to use are obsidian, gold, and nether brick. So let's see what I can come up. So as I do with all of my mega builds, I break it down into smaller pieces. The first piece is the archways leading into these doors. I want these doors to feel very recessed into it. So the hallway is actually out a lot further than the door. So as you walk through, it sort of opens up into the doors either side. I do like this. But this is only the base coat. This is just nether rack. And I used all of that nether brick apart from one piece making this. Uh, so I, I'm going to need significantly more of that. But now it's very dark and I want to brighten it up. So I'm going to go through with both copper and glowstone to just try and add some extra details into there. So while I'm working on the hallway, there is one bottleneck of this whole procedure. And that is going to be this. Now I've replaced the conduits behind these old... Uh, hardened flux dots and item ducts from thermodynamics. I've replaced them with the end of IO counterparts and that's speeded it up incredibly. But the bottleneck is the lava and this is only smelting at a rate of 20. There are other ways that we can increase it. Uh, we can use something like liquid bla blazing pyrothium. Uh, if we look at crucible here, uh, heat sources, this is 20 times. And I'm not entirely certain if we can actually get this because I think we need to, to make the magma crucible, but it's only actually. We should be able to get like a stack of that. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And now we need the magma crucible, which um, I shouldn't imagine is hard. Like machine frame, we needed the tin gear, wasn't it? I shouldn't imagine this is hard at all. Oh, come on. Problem when you play mod packs is every now and again, you do get, thinking, does this require hardened glass or can it actually use fused quartz? I mean, if it requires hardened glass, I mean, that ain't a problem. Oh, it looks like I'm missing a lot. Okay, so we're going to try this magma crucible recipe uh, with fused quartz. I don't know if this has worked, but a lot of the time when it said hardened glass in the recipe, I've tried fused quartz and it's worked. And this is no different. Okay, great. So the magma crucible, if we put this down here, uh, and we throw this pyrothium in it, it should start making this into a liquid. Now, I don't know if this can auto output. Uh, we want to... No, don't do any of that. Uh, we want to output to the top and we'll see if there's auto outputs to this lava drop it does it does it does it does so we need i think we need five buckets of this stuff to get the true 90 times rate but it shouldn't take too long to do so i've grabbed up the blazing pyrothium in my buckets from the thingy holy crap i didn't realize i was actually gonna set this on fire okay 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 blazing pyrothium Bad blazing pyrothium. I mean, it shouldn't burn, so I guess it's only just when we set it down. It doesn't seem to be spreading. Does that do 90 at each one? No. The, the further away it goes, the less it does. So I need to put one down here. And of course, spread. One down here. And I do have a bunch of this. Crisis averted yet again. It's done. It wouldn't let me put the stairs there. It kept instantly destroying the stairs. So I've gone with just a regular block with a slab on top to stop it from spreading. And I've put it there. Now, I do want to showcase that I do actually play with fire tick faults. I double checked to make sure it was on faults and it already was. This prevents fire from actually spreading and destroying your base. It also allows us to create things like braces. I find it's just a better way to play. A lot of other YouTubers play this way. Mainly because it just allows them to, you know... Build brazers out of other things other than netherrack. And I, just, I like it anyway. It, it adds more things to it. But I've got this working now. This is all working good. It seems that this is processing at a high enough rate. We're getting significantly more now. And I'm happy with it. Now what I need to do is get back to building. All I want to do is build. But it turns out my wife's having a bit of a problem. She's got monsters and she's come and got my attention. There's her head. There's her drill. There's her zombies. <laughs> Oh, this is why when you build a mob farm. Oh, jeez. She blocked me in. Well, there goes a bunch of her stuff. Evil. Evil. Crisis averted. We avert a lot of crisis. I should be a flash crash over. Crash over? Crossover event. Yeah. So I'm working away here on the base. And there's one thing that I wanted to do. I needed a new block to build with. And I want to try something from this Z-Tones mod. Here, lots of really cool things from this mod pack that I, I, I thought we could try and use. 
Uh, primarily, I want to use something red. I want to use something evil looking because I've decided we are going to build an evil layer. And I think the perfect thing that I want to do is this right here. Now, I've never used Z-Tones before, so this could go really good. It could go really bad. But uh, I've made up a bunch of these Z-Tone tiles. I don't think they're actually in my crafting grid. There we go. So you make up these Z-Tone tiles with just stone slabs and chiseled stone. It looks like you can actually chisel this. Get some really cool textures. Okay. So uh, now I should be able to craft up a stack of this. And I want to see if we can do this with chisel. Uh, we can chisel it, but it only chisels it in these variants. Whereas if we... Old shift and scroll, it scrolls through them. And I wanted red three. This one. I think this one is going to fit perfectly for what I've got in store. Many hours I have spent on just the hallway and the archway that exit this room, guys. And I'm not even finished today. I've been at this all day and I am really happy with what I've come up with. You guys can see behind me a little bit of a sneak peek of what's to come. Actually... You really can't because you don't even see that on the other side. But hey, wanted to show you in here what I've done uh, is pressed the uh, the snapshot button instead of the, um, you know, bring the HUD up button. <laughs> so I've put this red here and I've decided that we are going to go with a demonic themed evil base. I really want an evil styled base. So... That is exactly what I've done. As you come out here, guys, you can start to see a little bit of what I've done. So you've got this here. We've got the nether brick with some chiseled nether brick. We've got some gold behind it. And then we've got some glowstone sort of pairing over. And the same goes on on this side. It's the exact same, just mirrored. We've got the illuminated glass on the floor here, along with this lava brick. Now, I didn't show the recipe for this lava stone, uh, but it's, it's fairly simple. Oops-a-daisy. It's just, to make the lava stone, it's just lava uh, surrounded by stone. So I'll show you my setup for that in a moment. But for right now, let's get to this. With the illuminated glass on top. Then we've got the roof, which I really like. I really like the way the roof has come together. This sort of purple vibe here, I think, is really, really good. Looks really, really nice. We'll go up here. We've got chiseled lapis and chiseled redstone in the roof. I was going to put diamond, but uh, I figured I'd go through way too many diamonds that I don't have at the minute. Turns out I did actually have to make this bigger by a bit because uh, it didn't actually kind of fit. And these are chiseled redstone too. And then I've used silver here to sort of frame out a bit of an archway to give it a little bit more shape. And I've tried to play around with different sort of depths here. And I really do like the way that it has come together. This has been a lot of trial and error. I've tried something, I've tore it down, and I've put it back together. And ultimately, this is what I like. I like these big kind of white pillars here. I think they look really, really cool. And these are going to be our doorways from now on. So every time I create a new room, I've got to add in a doorway like this. So it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of work. But uh, for right now, I'm happy with how this has turned out. But you know the episode isn't over yet. Let me show you how I've got my lava stone set up. It actually starts over here. This is our lava generator. I've switched out the drum that we had this side. As you can see, we've got one this side. Uh, I've switched it out with an end of IO tank. And this works just like the end of IO chests do by transmitting fluids or wirelessly. Then over here, you can see I've got this other one right here. It's full. I've got my old drum there because it still had a bit left in it. We've got this ender tank just simply filled up with lava. And uh, just doing the same as what we did with the water pockets to set up the auto crafting for salt. Uh, but this is just the lava instead. And then we've got this crafting it up. Now, I do have a stone uh, storage box over here set for stone. And I also have one set here for lava stone. I'm out of stone at the minute. I need to put some stone in there. But it's semi-automated. I just need to put stone in it. But I'm not really going through all of that much lava stone. So I'm not too worried about it. And one other thing that I've briefly automated is glass. I've got a storage drawer going into here. This is smelting up my glass, which then goes into this storage drawer, which is then pulled over here into this chest, which is then sent into this furnace to make me illuminated clear glass, because I'm going through this stuff like nobody's business. Now, we need to look at the rest of this hallway, and I would love to get something done up between here and here. Now, we could put another room here, and we could put another room here, and I think we may very well do that. So it means making another one of these archways. 
But this is a space between the two. This hallway and this hallway are not going to be in this style. It's going to be in a very different style. I want this to be a shop front and I want it to be very, very open and warm and not really too demonic. So I want to do this demonic though. And this is a bit that I want to focus on right now up to here. We're going to have like a big archway here that is also going to be like a doorway into our kingdom. So we may do some like little editing at the front bit. I'm not even worried too much about this, too much about this. I'm only going to bring it up to this block right here because this is exactly where the door is going to sit. And then I might do something on this side when we get come to do the shops. But I need to sort of work out exactly how this is going to go. Now I've said this a few times on this channel, but I'll keep on saying it because I truly do believe it. When tackling a mass project like this, it's really good to just break it down into smaller segments. Doing all of this by hand and doing it all yourself is one huge task. It has taken me all day just to do this much. So doing it all is going to take even longer. And it can be very, very demotivating to look at this big project and go, you know what, there's a lot to do. So I'm just going to leave it for now. But... If you break it down into smaller segments and try and piece those segments out. So I could have gone ahead and done this door everywhere. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to put the archways in because it's one of the easier bits to do. And this is going to show me exactly how far I want to go this way and how far I want to go this way. Now, I've done it equal and we've got a door there and a door there, which is where the next rooms are going to be. So we'll be able to do four unique rooms off of this. And I think that would be really, really cool. Now... With the archers in place, I'm getting more of a feel and it's starting to really feel exactly like how I want it to feel. And I'm feeling super motivated to keep on going because every time I go through here, I just like the way that it looks. And I can't wait to get it looking like this. It looks like some sort of grand chapel when you look up. And when this is all done and there's no stone, I think the immersion is going to be even better. So now the next bit that I'm going to work on is what I think is the next easiest bit. And that is the obsidian roof here and in these bits right here and that's it the roof is in place in these segments one two and three and i've come up all the way to doing the quartz borders and it looks really really good starting to feel a little bit more immersive here now it'd be a lot better when we get rid of all of the stone i think but i want to have something different in these segments here so i'm going to worry about those last again the roof in those segments last Right now, I want to get this archway filled in on these sides right here. I've only got to do it four times, and I've been doing some thinking. I'm going to need to build this hallway a lot. Like, this hallway is going to go throughout our entire base, throughout many different rooms, and this means I'm going to be building this quite a lot. And this thing isn't quick to build. It takes a little bit of time to build. So what I'm thinking of doing, guys, in the future is maybe streaming some stone block on the channel and just streaming the building of these hallways and interacting with you guys. I think that might be a cool idea. So look out for that. Anyway, it's time to get these archways in place. Just like that, we've got the archways put in place. So now we've got a grand total of three of these doorway archways. And I want to do something different in this area. I don't want this area to go as far back as this. I think we're probably just going to level this out probably here uh, with a couple of like indented stuff like this in it. Uh, but I'm not entirely certain on that area. Yeah, I've got to have a think about it. One thing I did do, guys, is I did put ingots on here to show this is the ingot room. And then we've got this over here to show that this is the, uh, the glowstone room. So... I don't know if we're going to... I mean, we might keep these stored over here. I was going to move the diamonds over there because we're not technically producing them over here anymore. This would be more for the things we are producing over here. But I'm not entirely certain yet. Uh, I'm going to worry about that in the next episode. Because next episode, I want, to, I want to sort of add in a couple of extra rooms here. And I want to add in some ingot processing rooms where we can actually start making the ingots and the alloys that we need to make. So, my next task is to go ahead and get this floor done. Now, I am going to take this all the way across here and all the way to about here, I think, with this one, three, or five wide strip going all the way down the center. And then in these bits here, we'll have it sort of branch off like this. So I'm going to get this floor done now. Well, guys, the day has ran away with me again, and I've had a lot of fun making this hallway. And I'll show you guys the final product. We now have the hallway Fully completed for ceiling, interlocks, everything in this hallway is pretty much done. 
So I've tried to keep it very much in the similar style that we went through before. I've gone ahead and used these. They kind of look like skulls in the wall and I like them. And then we've got sort of like the lapis peering out with the glowstone behind for a little bit of light. Then as we go higher up, we've got the obsidian pillars, the only place we're actually using these here, with the redstone behind. There is things I want to change these redstones out for later on, or maybe this glowstone later on. I want to change it out for something, but we don't have access to it just yet. And it's not something that I can just go ahead and whip up it in an episode or two. It's going to take me a few episodes to get to what I want. Uh, but I think it'll look really good behind there in the end. But uh, yeah, I, re I revamped this top row to be all unique and the same. And this is diamond block chiseled. And it's got this like purple thing in it. And I saw it and I'm like, that's brilliant. And uh, I may have spent like all my diamonds on the roof. <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 it's, it's all done. And it gets this really grand palace kind of feel as you walk through it. Just feels really, really nice. Especially when we get rid of this stone over here. And we can't see the stone anymore. But to think this was just a stone hallway before, and now it is this. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing the transformation this hallway has had since the beginning of this episode. Oh, it's taken me a couple of days, but I'm really, really happy with it. And it, d it definitely feels like it's a demonic evil lair. And that's exactly what I'm going for. This is our lair. This is where we live. It's evil. And uh, we need to do the front end here. But this is not going to be in the same evil theme as this. This is my layer. This here is going to be a row of shops going off that way and off that way. And we're going to have little like shops just in here where you can buy stuff and whatnot. Or where Abyss can come over and buy stuff. And I want this to be a little bit of a different color palette. But uh, this is it. We're going to put some sort of like grand entrance way here. That allows us to come into our layer. But uh, for right now I'm fairly happy with how this has turned out. And that is going to be where I do call it for this episode guys. So... If you've enjoyed the video, do me a favor, guys. Leave it a like and hit subscribe. As always, I'm Casey. You're the awesome folks. Thank you so much for watching. Take care now. Bye.